This video describes an interface to the Python programming language, new in Stack Graphics 19. Here I've loaded into a Stack Graphics data sheet information from the World Bank about demographics around the world in the year 2008. Our goal is to use the k-means cluster analysis procedure in the Python scikit-learn library to group these 188 countries into three clusters. We wish to have clusters with similar values of life expectancy, fertility rate, male percentage, and age dependency ratio. In this video, we'll discuss four topics. The first is installation and configuration. I'll show you how we can use Stack Graphics to help download and install Python and configure the required libraries. The second topic will be data exchange, passing the contents of a Stack Graphics data sheet to Python and later capturing results back from Python. The third topic will have to do with creating and executing Python scripts. And finally, I'll show you how we're building standard Stack Graphics dialog boxes to call popular Python procedures. In order to get Python to do a k-means cluster analysis, there are four basic groups of commands that we're going to have to issue. The first will be to have Python import two libraries we're going to need. One is called Pandas, the other is called Numpy. The next thing we'll have to do is have Python read the data that's currently in a Stack Graphics data sheet. Stack Graphics will do this by creating a CSV file, asking Python to put it in a data frame, and also asking Python to replace any Stack Graphics missing value indicator, which is minus 32768 with numpy's not a number. We'll then import the k-means procedure from scikit-learn. The basic cluster analysis is done through the command k-means equals km, where we specify the number of clusters we want to create and have it fit the data that's been read into the data frame. We'll then ask k-means to predict which cluster each of the rows in data fall into and put it in a variable called clusters. Finally, we'll have Python create another data frame called results containing the cluster numbers and ask Stack Graphics to read that back into our Stack Graphics data sheet through another CSV file. Let's start with installing and configuring Python. If you click on Interfaces on the Stack Graphics menu, you'll see two panels appear on the ribbon bar, one for R and one for Python. If you select Installation and Configuration, a dialog box will come up that will help you install Python. The first thing you'll need to do is push the Install button which will take you to python.org. You can then use the link on python.org to download and install Python. Once you've installed Python, you need to go to this field on the dialog box and type in the path to python.exe. You'll know you have it right if when you push the test button, a Python window appears. Now it's time to configure the libraries we need. There are three buttons down at the bottom. One for installing the libraries required by all procedures. A second for installing a library, matplotlib, required for creating graphs. And a third for installing scikit-learn. That's the package of Python routines to implement machine learning algorithms 
like k means. Once you've gone through that, and that'll take a few minutes, press OK, and you'll be all set to go. I've now loaded the World Bank data into the Stack Graphics data sheet. Back on the interface menu, there are now three options that I want to talk about. The first is Exchange Data with Python. I can use this to pass the data into a Python data frame and then go into Python and type whatever commands I'm interested in. Execute script will allow me to create a sequence of Python commands right inside Stack Graphics, store it, and execute it whenever I want to. The k-means clustering option is an option to predefined dialog boxes that we've already built that give you flexible access to the k-means clustering procedure. I want to show you how I can now take data from the Stack Graphics data sheet and paste it into the Python window to do my own operations. And to do that, I'll go to the top menu to Interfaces and select Exchange Data. The first thing we'll do with this dialog box is press Load to load up Python in its separate window. I now want to create a data frame containing all or a selection of the columns in my data sheet. The Python data frame will be called Data by default. And I could take all the columns, except I think I'll just select a few. Female percentage, age dependency ratio, life expectancy, fertility rate. And press OK. When I press the Export button, Stack Graphics will create a CSV file for me with those columns. It'll also give me the commands that I need to type in Python window or paste in the Python window in order to import that data. If I push copy, it'll put those commands on the Windows clipboard. I can now go back to Python. In the Python window, if you press the right mouse button and go to Edit, Paste, it will now put those commands into the window and read the information into a data frame called data. And now you could do whatever you want. I'll just go ahead and, and type data.info and that will show you that the data has been read into Python. Now I could have gone ahead and typed in the Python commands I wanted it to execute just individually in the Python window. We have an easier way to do it, however. If I go back to the Interfaces menu, you'll see a menu selection, Execute Script. What Execute Script will do is it will pass data to Python, run a series of commands that you save in this stat folio, and then pull data back again. I start by telling it the columns I want to pass to Python, which are going to be the four that I passed earlier. On the next dialog box, you'll see that it knows the path to Python, and then it will automatically create a data frame called data unless you check the name, unless you change it. I'm now going to paste into this field here the commands that I want Python to execute. Now, the one thing you have to be a little bit careful of when you type in the Python commands is that you use single quotes around any strings that you need to pass. Double quotes will get it confused. Single quotes will be okay. And basically, I'm going to tell it to import the k-means procedure, run it and create three clusters, predict the cluster numbers, put the cluster numbers back into a new data frame called results, and write that data frame 
is C colon slash data slash Python results dot CSV. Okay. I'll now take the name of that file and put it down here to the program where it should do the import. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the results, which will be the cluster numbers, and put them into sheet B. I'll now press OK, select whatever tables I want to see, and let it run the procedure. And you'll know that it worked because when I go back to the data book, I now have the data clusters in sheet. Well, that was um, fairly easy. However, it could be even easier. And what we've decided to do is build in some predefined interfaces to some of the more commonly used Python libraries. If you go back to interfaces on the main menu, you'll see that I've already built a menu item to do k-means clustering. What this is going to do is give you a sequence of standard stack graphics dialog boxes and underneath the covers write all those commands and Python scripts that were necessary to do the analysis. So we'll start by telling it look at female percentage, age dependency ratio, life expectancy, and fertility. On the next screen, it'll show us all the different options we actually have in the k-means procedure. I executed the simplest possible command when I was demonstrating it before. Now I have a lot of other built-in options. The nice thing is I don't need to know the syntax of the k-means command in order to do this. I just specify the number of clusters I'm interested in what algorithm I wish it to use, whether I want it to use smart or random selection on the initial seeds. Um, over here, whether or not I wish to standardize the variables, which I certainly do because they're measured in different units, how many runs I'm willing to tolerate, and also, and this is the, probably the most important, what I want to do with missing values. If, if a row has a particular field with a missing value, I can throw out the entire row, or I could assign it to its nearest cluster centroid, or I could replace missing values with various other values and so forth. So I have a lot of options. I just pick and choose and press OK. And then I can ask for various tables and graphs and press OK again. And what has happened is the program was now smart enough to execute the proper scripts, create the proper CSV files, pass the data to Python, let Python do the analysis, and recapture the cluster numbers. And you can see, for example, in this three-dimensional cluster here, that it created three clusters with various countries in three different groups. And it's pretty clear with respect to life expectancy, female percentage, and age dependency ratio that there are some pretty well-defined clusters in that group of 188 countries.